Thank you, Alessandra. Thank you. I'm privileged and humbled to be surrounded by such a powerful group. Cristalian, you've done a remarkable job, um, not only by setting, you know, important deadlines and benchmarks for the organizations you've been serving so brilliantly, but also for being an example that from um, a small country um, with difficult conditions, uh, women can really make it to the top uh, at the world level. So we wish you luck in the, in the future. NATO is also here. Yeah, a round of applause, please. I also know that the other international organizations like NATO, uh, also the Council of Europe, the OECD, the G7, and now we have the French presidency of the G7, like the Canadian one before, which made for the first time, as I remember, for a G7 presidency, gender equality as a transversal issue uh, going in every single other uh, subtopic or sectorial thing. Where I feel as a, as a former practitioner of public policy and also as head of, the, uh, of one of the leading NGOs in Romania in the world, the Aspen Institute, is that I think we still lack something that I would call common methodology. Uh, because if you look, every institution comes with something very valuable. The World Bank has this women, law, and business report, which is an amazing thing. Then you have country assessments in the OECD in how to measure the invaluable contribution to society that women have in family and care. We don't measure that. It's from God. Women, mothers, uh, grandmothers, uh, friends, females, they are somehow obliged. It goes by a, a divine law, a sort of a natural law of gender that they should take care of the elderly, of the kids when they're young, of all of us when we're sick. And we have to find a way to measure this and, 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 and to recognize this not only in financial terms, but also in terms of societal contribution. Because what I do believe, the most important task we have in front of us is to change the mindset, the culture, a prejudice, which is there. Each, which is there to stay, I'm afraid, if we don't do this more holistic approach to this kind of thing. Uh, and I think a, probably a division of labor more explicit between the big stakeholders of the international community, UN of course included, Simone, I see you here. Uh, when President uh, Macron uh, declared last year in preparation of the G7 presidency of France at the UN General Assembly that uh, to make gender equality a great global cause, this is something which really resonates, I think, with all of us. Now, moving us to uh, uh, Graziella, moving us to our region, not only to Romania. This year, there will be 30 years since the fall of communism. And communism in our societies have left a legacy. Good, bad, bad, good. But I would say that the portion of the fact that countries like Bulgaria, which in the World Economic Forum um, uh, annual report on gender equality is ahead. Bulgaria ahead of Switzerland, Lithuania ahead of the Netherlands, and Spain, and Bosnia and Herzegovina ahead of Romania. Because in some segments of our society, the more egalitarian approach, forced, authoritarian, dictatorship based between women and men left some traces. We have more women in science and technology and STEM education than other countries, just because this is a legacy of that. But the other sign of the coin in our societies, with so much imbalance, polarization, that women, especially young women and old women, and less educated women, are also vulnerable more intensely than in other societies. I'm very concerned, as a, as a father of much bigger kids now, they're, they're grown-ups. When I see so much gender and sexual abuse in our societies, 
when I see the cyber domain becoming a place that is propagating this kind of immensely inhumane and, and indecent and unethical procedures. So we are societies, the former communist countries, we are societies of, of intense contrast. On some things we are catching up, on some things we are really ahead of the others, including in pay, in others we are still relatively undeveloped societies. This is something that I think for our region uh, should be done. Now, I was reading with great attention because we had the, the, uh, uh, the Sibiu summit just a few weeks ago, which was a, a great success. And also the Romanian presidency as a whole is a great success. And I think we should give credit to everyone who really does something positive, including on this topic. We've, we're doing well. But as I read in the strategic agenda, what President Tusk was putting ahead of the heads of states and governments in Sibiu at the council, and I've seen lots of big ideas, I've not seen that much focus on the topic we discussed today, and I think the obligation of the new members of the European Parliament, of the new members and head of the European Commission, um, the new head of the, U of, the, of the Council, replacing Mrs. Tusk. And I think we should put this thing uh, uh, to the heart of, uh, of what, we, what we do. Now, coming closer to, to, to what we can do here, and I speak on behalf of the Aspen Institute of Romania this time, on every major international conference we organize, there is a gender conversation by definition. Last year, the Bucharest Forum, the largest international conference of the region, we had a panel on this, will continue in October. More so, using also the fact that the World Bank and the IFC, the financial arm of, of the World Bank Group, they are really true to the 2x challenge, which was taken globally to basically mobilize three trillion US dollars to f channel that money for women entrepreneurship. And to the merit of the World Bank and the IFC, recently, I think, uh, I think Tatiana, who's leading this great team of, of, uh, of World Bank in Romania and Hungary, uh, there was an arrangement with some commercial banks to start doing some lending. We are not doing enough. And I think the startup nation that the Prime Minister, Mrs. Dancila, is referring to is a good thing. And also, I see Paula here. Um, I think we have to find also other market mechanisms to spur uh, women uh, entrepreneurship and economic um, uh, uh, issue. And the last thing I would like to mention is leadership. We do leadership at Aspen, value-based leadership. That's our thing. And we decided this year, uh, in the fall, to do the first leadership seminar for women from all walks of life. Not only business, not only politicians, not only NGOs, but all of them together. And also offer to our region, as we do it every time. So if you think that such an, a, a, a vast uh, effort at the global level, uh, subcontinental level, and regional and national level, or subnational level, can be done. It cannot be done without leadership. And should be lady leadership, but should also be men leadership. So as I mentioned, I'm, I don't know what I'm doing on this great panel. Um, I'm just telling you that I feel that this issue could be the key to the fundamental question of modern society, can we really build inclusive, prosperous, sustainable societies without addressing the major disbalance, which is still the prejudice and the, the huge work that needs to be done when it comes to gender equality and women empowerment. Uh, the more men uh, are engaged and, and believe in this, not only for the sake of the cameras, not only because it's fashionable now, not only because of affirmative targets, but the more we realize that probably this is the only real buffer, anti-cyclical cyclical buffer, the only lasting solution for human society to thrive and not fall into polarization, conflict, and God forbid, war, 
is to address the fundamental disbalance of our societies. This is one of the critical strategic things for human mankind in the period ahead. Congratulations for organizing this conference. And Alessandra, good luck with your newborn. Um, call me uh, when the time has come. I'll be there just to say hello to the new Romanian citizen. Thank you so much.